have a restaurant in North Alabama, mm -hmm. KC's Classic Burger Bar, the daughter Katie Cerrone. We'd like to continue that. We'd like to be able to incorporate the name KC's, perhaps KC's Silver Top Diner, if that's allowable. And if it isn't, well, we'll just call it KC's. Is that just figuring out with the previous owner? Uh, I guess that Silver Top part, is that just discussion with her, the city of Tucket? Yes, the, the, the previous owner has ownership of the name. I've never met her. I'd love to meet her. And, and if it's in the cards that we can work something out, then wonderful. And if it isn't, we'll just call it Casey's. Gotcha. Uh, two more questions. How long do you estimate it's going to take to get the renovations necessary? And then how, what cost are you looking at? We're thinking that perhaps within a year we should be able to do enough to take it out and bring it to its elevated destination, which hopefully within a year we can find it. Okay. And cost wise, I mean, I'm hoping that it's very low six figures. Gotcha. But you're prepared to potentially invest that in if that's what it takes. Gotcha. Let me ask you a question. Why why do you want to get involved in this operation? I am new I'm new to Rhode Island, but reading up on it, it's it's been a maybe a hassle is the word for several years. It's been an issue this time. Why why get involved? Well, first of all, nostalgically, I think a great percentage of this the people in the state have been in the Silver Top Diner. I remember my grandfather and my dad bringing me there when I was a little boy, and that's over 50 years ago. And since my daughter got into the restaurant business in North Attleboro a couple of years ago, because she's doing very well, we decided to expand. I saw that this diner was available. I read it in the Providence Journal one day, and I said, wouldn't that be neat to be able to restore this diner? And that could become another KC's classic burger. So you're hoping, you know, to continue that style for the year to come. I am. Uh, and your daughter, will she ultimately uh, manage it? Is that kind of the plan? Yeah, she's the owner of the restaurant, and then she will take ownership also of the diner. Do you know the logistics of how, how big this is, how many people it can sit? I, uh, I don't know the capacity okay. inside, but I can give you some numbers. It's 16 and a half feet wide, it's 11 feet high, and it's 41 feet long without the caboose that goes on the end, of, you know, for a restroom, and it weighs 40,000 pounds. I was gonna say, does that make moving it to, uh, moving it to Cranston a little difficult? Oh, that made it very difficult. We had to jump through a lot of loops, get a lot of permits, get a bunch of police departments coordinated to do all of this, and then find the rigging brothers, uh, uh, the Demers brothers rigging, they've been doing this for over 70 years, their family to be able to pull it out. You mentioned there's four cities that are interested. Ultimately, obviously, I know there's going to be a lot of negotiations. What are you looking for when it comes to the future home? Or, you know, well, we're looking for proximity to North Adam World. We don't want it to be too far away because we'd like to be able to advertise the two restaurants within a 15-mile yeah. radius. And, of course, we're looking for a busy street and a lot of population. And then lastly, on a personal level, what's it like, you know, like you said, seeing this whole process go through, what's it like on a personal level? On a personal level, I still can't believe it. So uh, we're here with uh, Richard Gutman. He is a uh, diner consultant and has been working with Al Cerrone, moving the Silver Top Diner, as you can see here. Uh, and uh, Rich is going to tell us a little bit about what he's been doing with Al. Hi, thanks a lot. Uh, well, I've written some books about diners and have worked on some diner restoration projects, and we're trying to uh, to see if we can bring this thing back to life in an appropriate manner, keep it in Rhode Island, and uh, make everybody happy. And uh, how old is the diner, Richard? The diner was built in 1938 by the Coleman Dining Car Company in uh, New Jersey, and they built some of the most stylish diners of the period, and this is a great example of the... Uh, Art Deco pre-war model, and it's got a long history here. It's been in Rhode Island ever since it was built, and we're going to see it uh, serving food again. And what actually is it? What does it take to move something like this? I mean, it's 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 it's, it's, it's I mean, if we look over here, it's just, it's huge, and I, I believe it, it's it's how many thousands of pounds? It weighs forty-two thousand pounds, <laughs> and uh, it's got a lot of concrete and ceramic tile in there, which accounts for a lot of the weight and the steel. And uh, they they move them around all the time. They've been moved from. Uh, Pennsylvania to California, but it's not easy and it's uh, not inexpensive. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. Is this one of, would you say this is one of the old, oldest diners that we have in Rhode Island? Uh, it is one of the oldest ones, yes. Uh, the oldest diner in operation dates back to 1922. 
So this is a little bit uh, of a puppy compared to that, but uh, it's a great example and it means an awful lot to the local people who've had countless blueberry muffins there over the years. So it, it certainly is uh, nostalgic to many. Absolutely. It lived most of its life on Harris Avenue down near where Providence Place Mall is and went out due to some urban redevelopment and has been sitting uh, unused for a long time so everyone is very excited about the possibility of sidling up at the counter again.